It's T.A. Megan. It's a beautiful day. I feel like reading, so let's continue with Pippi Longstockings. In, I'm sorry, Pippi in the South Seas. We're on chapter six. Chapter six. And it calls Pippi Goes Aboard. And there she is. She looks like she's on board a ship, doesn't she? Let's read. On a beautiful morning, the hop toad sailed into the harbor, decorated with flags and pennants from end to end. The town band was there on the pier, playing welcome songs with all of their might. The whole town had gathered to see Pippi receive her father, King Ephraim I Longstocking. A photographer was also standing by, ready to snap pictures of their meeting. Pippi was jumping up and down with impatience, and the gangplank was hardly down before Captain Longstocking and Pippi rushed towards each other with shouts of joy. Captain Longstocking was so happy to see his daughter that he threw her way up into the air several times and Pippi was so happy to see her dad that she threw him way up in the air still several more times. Here's a picture of Pippi throwing her dad up into the air. The photographer is there too and so is Mr. Nielsen. The only person who was not happy was the photographer because he couldn't get a picture of with either Pippi or her father so up in the air all the time. Tommy and Annika also came forward and greeted Captain Longstocking, but oh how pale and miserable they looked. It was their first time after their illness that they had been out. Pippi, of course, had to go on board and say hello to Friedolf and all her other friends amongst the seamen. Tommy and Annika trotted along, too. They felt so strange walking around the ship that had come from so far away, and they kept their eyes wide open so as not to miss anything. They were especially eager to see Agaton and Theodore. But Pippi said that the twins had signed off the ship a long time ago. Pippi hugged all the sailors so hard that five minutes later they were still <gasps> gasping for breath. <coughs> then she lifted Captain Longstocking up onto her strong shoulders and carried him through the crowd and all the way home to the Villa Villa Cooler. Oh, she's so strong. Hand in hand, Tommy and Annika trudged along behind them. Live long, King Ephraim, shouted all the people of the town. They felt that this was a big day in the history of their town. A few hours later, Captain Longstocking was in bed at Villa Villa Pula, sleeping and snoring away so loud that the whole house shook. Pippi and Tommy and Annika were sitting around the kitchen table where the remains of a splendid supper were still in evidence. Tommy and Annika were quiet and thoughtful. What were they thinking about? Annika was just thinking when you come right out and down to the facts, she would much rather be dead than without Pippi around. And Tommy was sitting there trying to remember <clears throat> if anything in this world was really fun without Pippi, but he couldn't think of anything. Life was an empty waste, he had felt. Oh, they're so sad. But Pippi was in a wonderfully happy mood. She stroked Mr. Nielsen, who was carefully making his way back and forth between the plates on the table to the sink to be cleaned. She stroked Tommy and Annika and she whistled. And she sang alternately and she took happy little dance steps now and then. 
She didn't seem to notice the time in Annika with downcast and sad. Going to see for a bit again is going to be marvelous, she said. Just think of being on the ocean where there's so much freedom. Tommy and Annika sighed. <sighs> I'm quite excited about seeing Kerr Kerr Dut Island to imagine what it will be like to be stretched out on the beach, dipping my big toe in the South Pacific. And I'll have, all I have to do is open my mouth and a banana will fall right in it. Tommy and Annika sighed. <sighs> oh, it's going to be a lot of fun to play with children down there, Pippi continued. Tommy and Annika sighed. <sighs> oh, what are you saying for, asked Pippi. Don't you like the idea of me playing with the cute children down there? Of course we're happy for you, but we're just thinking that will probably be a very long time before you come back to Villa Villa Coola. Oh yeah, I'm sure of that, said Pippi happily, but I'm not at all sorry. I think I can have almost more fun on that island. Annika turned pale in an unhappy face towards Pippi. Oh, Pippi, she said, how long do you think you'll stay away? Ah, that's hard to say. Hmm, maybe around till Christmas? I should think Christmas. Annika let out a wail. No! Well, who knows, said Pippi. Maybe I'll like it so much on that island, I'll feel like staying there forever. Tra -la, la 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 I might stay there forever. And she did a more pirouette during this time. And said, to be a maid, to be a princess. Oh, that's a, not a bad job for someone who's had as little schooling as I had. Tommy and Annika's eyes, looking out of their pale faces, began to have a peculiar, glossy stare. Suddenly, Annika bent down over the table and she burst into tears. <sighs> but come think of it, I don't think that I'd like to stay there forever, said Pippi. Uh, you know, one can have too much of court life and get sick of the whole business, if you know what I mean. So one fine day, you'll probably hear me say, Tommy, Annika. How would you like to go back to the Villa Villa Coola for a while again? Oh, how wonderful that would be when you write that to us, said Tommy. Right, said Pippi. You got ears, I hope. I have no intention of writing. I'll just say it. Tommy and Annika, now it's time to go back to the Villa Villa Coola. And Annika raised her head from the table and Tommy said, what do you mean by that? What do I mean? Said Pippi. Don't you understand plain words? Or have I forgot to tell you that you're coming along to the island? I thought I'd mentioned it. Hmm. Tommy and Annika jumped. They jumped to their feet. Oh, you talk such nonsense. Our mother and father would never allow it. Uh, yes, they would, whispered Pippi. I already talked to your mother. I gotta take a sip of water. It's a lot of reading. All right. And for exactly five seconds, one, two, there was silence in the kitchen of the Villa Villa Cool. There were only two piercing yells from Tommy and Annika who were wild with joy. Mr. Nielsen, who was sitting on the table and trying to spread butter on his hat, looked up surprised. <gasps> he 
he was still more surprised when he saw that Pippi and Tommy and Annika take one another by their hands and start dancing around crazily. They danced and started uh, shouting so that the ceiling lamp loosened and fell down. Then Mr. Nielsen threw the butter knife out of the window and started to dance too. <gasps> Is it really, really true? Asked Tommy when they calmed down and crawled into the wood bin to talk about it over. And Pippi nodded. Yes, it is true. Tommy and Annika were to go along to curve her due island. To be sure, all the ladies in the little town came to Mrs. Sedigran and said, you don't mean that you're think of sending your children out to the South Seas with Pippi Longstockings. You can't be serious. Then Mrs. Sedergren said, well, why shouldn't I? The children have been sick and the doctors say they need a change of climate. And as long as I have known Pippi, she has never yet done anything that has harmed Tommy nor Annika in any way. Why, no one could be kinder to them than she. Pippi's a good girl. But she's Pippi Longstocky, said the ladies, wrinkling their noses. Exactly, said Mrs. Sittergren. Pippi Longstocky. Now, manners may not always be what they ought to be, but her heart is in the right place. <clears throat> On a chilly night in early spring, Tommy and Annika left the little town for the first time in their lives to travel out to the great strange world with pity. All three of them were standing on the rail of the hot toad while the brisk night air filled the sails. Perhaps it would have been more accurate to say that all five because the horse Mr. and Mr. Nelson Nielsen were there too. All the children's classmates were on the pier and almost in tears with regret mingled with envy at their leaving. Tomorrow the classmates would be going to school as usual. Their geography homework was to study all the islands in the South Pacific. Tommy and Annika didn't have to do any homework for a while. Their health comes before school, the doctor had said, and they'll get to know the South Sea Islands firsthand, the Pippi. <coughs> Tommy and Annika's mother and father were also on the pier. Tommy and Annika suddenly felt lumps in their throats when they saw their parents wiping their eyes with handkerchiefs. But Tommy and Annika still couldn't keep from being happy. It's so happy that it almost hurt. Slowly, the hot toad sailed out of the harbor. Tommy and Annika, cried Mrs. Sedergren. When you get out on the North Sea, you have to put on two undershirts and... The rest of what she was trying to say was drowned in the cries of farewell from people who were on the pier. The wind whining, uh, the wild whinnying of horses, and Pippi's happy noise is, and Captain Longstocking's loud trumpeting when he blew his nose. The voyage had indeed begun. The hop toad was sailing out under the stars and ice blocks were floating around the bow and the wind was singing into the sails. Oh, Pippi, said Annika, I have such a funny feeling. I'm beginning to think I'll be a pirate too when I grow up. And that's the end of chapter six. I'm gonna drink some water before I read chapter seven.